Traveling 9,000 miles to Antarctica comes at a cost to our planet. Transportation produces 15% of the pollution making Earth hotter, so I was not surprised my followers noticed. Does that make me a climate hypocrite for traveling so much? I got this question in a comment. But this is not a story about shame or guilt. It's just about considering how and why we travel. These old cliches of, of seeing is believing. You know, David Attenborough's quote of, I've always believed that few people will protect the natural world if they don't first love and understand it. And I think that's really important, and that's the core of what we think, is you have to be able to see things to protect it. By seeing Antarctica, you get to understand its importance. It really sort of opens this Pandora's box of emotions. <laughs> The most common emotions seem to be a mix of awe and childlike wonder. Undoubtedly, the most incredible thing I've ever experienced. And that's another whale. So I think actually experiencing a place brings it to the fore of your mind. It makes you feel a, a kind of emotional investment, what, what's called place attachment. Elizabeth is studying what she calls the ambassador effect. HX Expeditions gives free travel for researchers like her, and in this case, she's interviewing passengers to understand how visiting Antarctica shapes views on climate change. And what we have found, actually, is that people who come down as climate deniers are probably going to go back as climate deniers because their views aren't tied to knowledge. You're better off providing routes to action for people who are already on side, which is the majority of people who visit Antarctica. She's referencing a peer-reviewed study across 125 countries finding 89% of people want their country's leaders to do more about climate change. Though lower in the U.S., still three-fourths of Americans want our leaders to do more, like the Hickey family visiting from Washington. You know, we talk a lot in our family about global warming and its impacts, but I think this cruise to Antarctica for us was one to kind of show them the importance of what they will inherit in trying to take care of the Earth. A message reinforced across this hybrid-powered ship. Giant batteries mean 20% less fuel. Newly installed sensors monitor changes in the ocean. It has an interactive science lab, lecture hall, and excursions to collect data for guest scientists who are studying everything from snow algae to penguins and whales. We would not be able to support the research that we are supporting if we had not paying customers that would allow our ships to go down south. But I am convinced that this should not be a one operator effort. This should be an industry effort because we only have one planet. Chase, I understand the NSF director also recently resigned, but what does that tell us about the future of funding for scientific research endeavors like this? Yeah, I mean, the director's resignation is sort of symbolic, right? He was appointed by Trump in his first term, and he's basically said, listen, I, I've done all I can do. So him stepping down is really just symbolism. It's the cuts to research in both the Antarctic and Arctic, which are so impactful, because these polar regions are increasingly important as polar ice melts. I mean, we've heard a lot about Trump wants Greenland, right? Greenland is in the Arctic Circle. So if we're actually pulling out of these regions by uh, cutting our scientific funding, then we're losing our influence there. We're creating opportunities for people like Russia and China to step in, amp up their presence. So, you know, there's kind of two conflicting things. Trump says he wants Greenland, but at the same time, he's pulling out of these important regions. All right, Chase Kane, thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.